Yeah, we said that we will start uh, with the lectures on uh, lateral dynamics. And we were talking about uh, uh, as a precursor when we uh, started this uh, in last class, we were talking about what we called as high side fall. Okay, we said that there is uh, the graph and both of them are acting. I hope uh, you were able to derive uh, the expressions which we got, we wrote in the last class. If there are any questions, we will answer that in the tutorial class, right. And please derive that those expressions which we said or which we gave, which we saw uh, in terms of the combined slip, okay, uh, the lateral and the longitudinal slip uh, from the brush model, right. Try it out or else we will do that sometime next week uh, in the tut tutorial class. Right? Okay. So, uh, we were just talking about this as a, as a precursor to the lateral dynamics. We said that suppose a, um, a motorcycle is taking a turn, you are taking a turn in a motorcycle and that uh, you are applying a brake. Okay? When you apply the brake, actually you, what, are, what are you doing? You are getting both the uh, longitudinal forces, you require longitudinal forces for braking as well as due to cornering, you, you also require a lateral force. Assume, assume that you are at the edge of, of the friction uh, circle or ellipse as you can call it or in other words, you are say at this position. Let us say that you are at that position. In other words, you are making use of all the friction that is that is available, right. Suppose you let go, you let go the uh, brake uh, that you have applied okay, and you keep cornering, what would happen? That is the question. Suppose you, right? Suppose you let go the, uh, the brake and then you uh, continue your cornering. In other words, what would happen now? the longitudinal force goes to 0, right. The longitudinal force goes to 0 and suddenly, okay, you are now shifting from this corner where you are at the boundary to the vertical axis, okay. With the same force, total force, you are now shifting from here to here. In other words, the lateral force is more than what is required for the equilibrium of the vehicle. Sir, why don't the total force remain constant? I understand yeah. that the la la lateral force would remain the same but… Yeah, uh, because what happens is something like this. I have plotted the slip curves. See, suppose you are, you are at this point, okay you are at this point, then if you now uh, apply a brake, the slip force remains the same. In other words, you are moving from here. These are the slip curves, forces that are generated due to the slip angle. The slip angle remains the same, okay, but you are shifting from this corner onto the y-axis. So in other words, you are shifting from B to C. You are shifting from B to C position, right. So, because look at this curves, how they are, this is the uh, lateral force curve, maybe this is equal to alpha is equal to 0, 3 degrees and so on, right. So, you are shifting now to the y axis, in other words, the forces, the y axis force which was this much has suddenly increased from this point to that point, right. So, when the forces increase, suddenly increase, and is not, is more than what need to be compensated by the, uh, for the centripetal force, then, then there is no equilibrium, there is loss of equilibrium. So, in other words, you overturn. Clear? Okay. We will, we will come back to this, um, maybe towards the end of the, uh, end of this lateral dynamics, so that you understand it better. But I am only telling you that there are practical applications of what we are going to study. Okay. Now, we will, we will get into the, uh, the uh, complete lateral dynamics 
derivations so that when when I come back you would understand this better right uh, let us look at how we are going to deal with lateral dynamics let us go into some fundamentals of of dynamics right now I am going to deal with what is called as a body centered coordinate of a vehicle. I am going to deal with what is called as the body centered coordinate of the vehicle. In other words, you can study the vehicle motion with respect to what is called as the inertial frame of reference, which I would put in ter terms of capital X and capital Y, or you can study this motion with a body centered coordinates, which I would put as x and y. It is a usual practice to study the motion of a vehicle in terms of body centered coordinates rather than the initial frame of reference. You all have done engineering mechanics, so you would understand uh, what would happen when I have a body centered coordinate. You would see that you have to have additional terms to take care of the realignment of the body centered coordinates in order to take care of realignment of the body centered coordinates. In other words, the body centered coordinate, what are the body centered coordinates? Suppose this is the vehicle. So, I have a body centered coordinate in this vehicle. So, the vehicle takes a turn, the body centered coordinate also takes a turn. Okay? So, they also move along with the vehicle. In other words, in, in other words, I have to take into account this motion of the vehicle and the body centered coordinates. Right? How do we take this into account? First thing is that is what we are going to see and then we are going to apply Newton Euler equation in order to understand the motion. Right? Let us say that the usual ijk is what defines the unit vectors uh, along x, y and z. Right? And let us say that the velocity of the vehicle in the three directions are u, v and w. These are the three, velo I mean velo uh, velocity of the vehicle in the three directions. right? And let us say that uh, the rotation, okay, which we would call as p, q and r denotes the rotation uh, of the vehicle or in other words the angular rotation velocity or angular velocity of the vehicle. Okay? So, this is the angular velocity or rotational velocity and u v w is the linear velocity of the vehicle. In simple terms, what is p? p is nothing but the roll, q is the pitch and r is the yaw of the vehicle. Okay? So, we call this as p, q and r. Now, what are the peculiarities if I am going to deal with this kind of systems? Okay? That is what uh, we are going to see, you know like what are the additional terms that come into picture. Let us say that the force acting okay, on the vehicle, let me write down the forces as f x i plus f y j plus f z k. There is the three forces that are acting on the vehicle and the moment m or let, let me call that as tau. Okay, the moment that is acting at when they are all vector quantities, I'm, I am uh, putting a squiggle at the bottom to indicate that they are vector quantities. So, let me call that as L plus I will, I will maintain the same thing. So, M plus L. What am I going to do? I am going to first write down the linear momentum and the angular momentum and I am going to look at the rate of change of mo this momentum and the result is the Euler 
um, Newton Euler equation, right? That is all I am going to do. So, let me write down first the linear momentum P m v and the angular momentum let me call that as h what is angular momentum i omega right now what is i now in this case the moment of inertia is it's actually a matrix right so you actually have this as i okay omega are, what are omegas angular velocities how are we define this pqr okay so i omega and what is i i is if you want we can replace that with a matrix notation okay i you would have you would have studied this as a, as a as one single quantity along x x and so on. Now we are just extended just extending it this to 3D. So I'm writing this as a matrix, and so i x x. So this is i x x, i x y, i x z, i y y, and so on. Right. So, you all of you know the definition for i x x integral y squared plus z squared d m, right. So, you know the definition for i x x throughout the volume of the body and you know, know also what is i x y minus of integral x y d m right ok. From this we go to write the we, we, we are going to have some peculiarities we will come to that in a minute we go to write the Newton Euler equation right. So, what does the Newton Euler equation say? So, how do I if, if it is just f is equal to m a we call this as a Newton's equation. So, if it is a Newton Euler equation we also include the moment that is acting okay, on, the, on the body. So, we write f is equal to where p is the linear momentum of the body. Similarly, we write tau is equal to the rate of change of angular momentum, right. So, far it is very simple uh, dynamics. Now, we have to be careful in writing these terms, okay. We are going to write it with respect to the body centered coordinates i j k I have introduced that for the body centered coordinates ok. Now, I have to introduce them with body with respect to a body centered coordinates. Let us see how for a body centered coordinates a particular vector changes that is what is our goal now. Let us consider a vector A, okay, vector A, some vector A. We are, we are, we are following Carnap. The reference for this is vehicle stability by Carnap, K A R N O P P. Carnap vehicle stability is, uh, is the reference for this. So, let us say that I have a vector A which I am going to express in terms of. i j k which are the unit vectors in the body centered coordinates, right. 
I want to find out now the variation or rate of change of A. So, I have in other words, if I now write d A by d t, I write this as A dot x i plus A dot y j, A can be any vector, it can be velocity, we will see that A is a dot k plus because i is not the inertial frame of reference and i also changes with time. So, I have to rewrite that part. So, I will in other words okay. clear all of you from uh, fundamental dynamics know how to write i dot. How do I write i dot? i dot j dot and k dot. In other words, d i by d t. You remember that in your earlier classes, you would have done this. Suppose I have x and y along which i and j are defined and if it is rotating with say for example, uh, uh, omega. So, the new coordinate due to a rotation of an angle theta gives you x prime and y prime, right. So, the new value of i which let us say that i prime which is equal to i plus di by dt, right is given by the changes okay, here which is along j same way along i okay. and so um, what is d i by d t d theta by d t into j right. So, because this is a unit vector i is a unit vector r into theta gives me this right. So, this is r into theta it is along the direction of j. So, d i sorry d i by d t d i is this d i by d t is nothing but d theta by d t d theta d theta by d t is omega omega into say j right. So, this you can do it for all three and write down this part oh, yeah right this we will keep that plus omega cross a that is what happens. Omega in our case is p q and r clear. So, we will call this part we will give a new name to this and we will call this as do a by do t call this as relative. So, what is the physical meaning of the first term? The physical meaning of the first term is simply that that is what an observer who is sitting in the body centered coordinate would see as the rate of change of A, right. So, because I have to apply this um, my formulas in terms of inertial frame of reference, now I know that when the body centered coordinates okay, changes with time, okay, I take into account that as well by putting that omega cross A. right okay what is omega cross a all of you know this where omega cross a how do i write that i j k what is omega as i said before p q r 
and A is A x A y A z. Right? Okay. So now d a by d t, if you write that in terms of this, write it in terms of, of that. So what would happen for i a dot x plus, pick that up from there plus i into q a z minus r a y the whole thing is i right clear if i want to express this as a vector then i would remove that i and just write that as a vector because after all yeah that's a vector write down a dot y plus what are the terms that are there that is the that is for the j term r a x minus p into a z and a dot z plus p a y minus q a x. Yeah. So, that is d a by d t. Okay. Now, I can apply my Newton Euler equation by assuming that a is or substituting for a the velocity I can write down the first of the equations which is dp by that is here that equation I can write it down. Of course, m is a constant so m is you can take that out and so write down what is the uh, first of the equations simple f x f y f z is equal to the first term becomes so m into what is it u dot plus q into u v w is what we said q into w minus r into v right any questions no questions everything is crystal clear Okay. Write down the rest of it. Write down the rest of it. V dot plus R into U minus P W and W dot plus P V minus q u. Right? Okay. So, that is the first set of equations. 
The second set is my tau is equal to dh by dt which is here, tau is given by L, M and N. So, that becomes my left hand side. So, let us let us write down that. So, tau is equal to dh by dt. Again, that is equal to dou h by dou t relative, this is the first term, that is the h dot term plus omega cos h. Remember, h is equal to, remember, h is equal to i into p q So, omega is p, q and r, right. Omega is not p dot, q dot and r dot, it is not p, q and r, right. This is a very standard terminology. For example, r, small r is used in the literature in vehicle dynamics to indicate yaw, okay. This is a very standard terminology. It is not usually written as omega x, omega y and omega c, right. Write down that, that is going to be an interesting expression, it is going to be a long expression. Do not differentiate i with respect of course t. So, the what is the, what's the first thing? Okay, let me remove this so do you know that already. L, M, N. i x x p dot plus i x y q dot plus i x z r dot. That is the first term in the vector plus write down omega cross h. Right. Okay. I will write down the final things. It is it's just nothing, it is not very difficult. So, let me, I will quickly write down that. I hope I do not make any mistakes in this. If there is anything, just point out i y y q dot plus i y z r dot. and i z x p dot plus i z y q dot plus i z z r dot okay so that are the dou h by dou t terms so then i have to put the same way q into a z minus r into a y Okay, what is A Z? A Z is H Z. H Z is what? Remember that I had to multiply, I had written already what is H. So, I X X, I Y Y, I Y Z, multiply it and put that there and so there will be plus Q into H Z. Okay. How many terms would be there on H Z or H Z? How many terms? there will be three terms, right. So, write down those three terms. So, you can write down that as q into h z minus r into h y. Remember that h x, h y, h z is what? I x x p plus I x y q plus I x z r 
right? So, what is this term? This is the hx term and that term hy term, hy and that term is the hz term, right? So, that is what is going to come here and so on. Though the expression looks very formidable and long, it is very simple to understand. There is nothing much, it is very simple to understand this expression. Okay. Do not worry, I am not going to deal with this kind of huge expression, I am going to make as usual some assumptions, right? What are the assumptions you think we can make? What are the terms I do not like? Yeah, okay. But I want, I want all, all that, you know, let us uh, U, V, W terms I, I need. The terms usually I do not like are this i, x, y and so on, right? So, how do I eliminate that? Look at, a, I mean imagine that you have a car, like I mean up to this is mundane, there is nothing, nothing great about it, you know, just uh, the relationship between the inertial frame of reference and body centered coordinates. Now, what are the assumptions you think you can make? Symmetry, fantastic. So, symmetry in a car is about what are the axes that you can consider the symmetry. What, what is, what do you think can, we can consider? Yeah. So, one is a longitudinal axis, you can consider this as symmetry. The other is that we are dealing with principal axes. Let us say that um, the i x x, okay, i y y and i z z and so on, what you have chosen as x, y and z for the car, let us say that it is the principal axis. Are they? May not. But then in that case, if you choose them to be the principal axis, all others go out. Right? Okay. So, we make this kind of assumptions and we also say that the Q, the pitch is not, uh, is not of interest to us, neglect it and ultimately we will bring it down to in a very simple handleable form. Right? We are going to make all these assumptions and then we will bring it to a handleable form. So, what is my first expression? I am going to now write down, right? I mean, is this, this is clear? Any questions? Okay. Now, with that assumptions, I am going to rewrite my expression 1, say right here, 1 and my expression 2, substitute that and write it, it's going to be a huge expression. And I am going to rewrite them in simple form, handleable form, which I am going to use. Clear? Okay. So let's let's see. Write down what is what is the expression which I can use. F x and F y. Let's write down F x and F y. So F x. that is the longitudinal uh, force in the longitudinal direction which we had already seen, okay? but with respect to the body centered coordinate is m into u dot minus rv, right? So, that is the body centered coordinate expression for longitudinal forces. Now, write down for the 
lateral force F y, F y is equal to m into v dot, okay, that is the first term our relative d a dou a by dou t. So, because of which I get a v dot term, what is the next term I would get? I am neglecting q and so on plus r q. Right, and what is my L and M? L and M from my expressions here. So it will be the first term will be there. I x x uh, into p dot. If you are not considering it, just consider symmetry. You are not considering uh, that you are under uh, you are in the principal axis. Then I x z will be there. So I x z into z into r okay and so on right so um, you can write down for m r dot again plus the last is this term what we have is here, the other terms because of symmetry uh, goes off plus i z x into p. Okay. So, I am going to remove these two later and look at uh, I would say the expressions for uh, the lateral dynamics. So, this in other words, this is the most general expression you can look at for the three dimensional case. But I am going to from here, I am going to make geometric assumptions so that ultimately the equations I am going to use become handleable, right? That is what I am going to do. And from this handleable equations, handleable in the sense that um, you know I want to work it out. Uh, in an analytical fashion, I want to look at the results, I want to interpret it and so on. So, from this, I am going to extract out the equations for lateral dynamics. That is all I am going to do. Clear? Any questions? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, n, n, l, n. Okay. For m, you can. Uh, yeah, right. Sorry. N, n, n. You're, you're, you're right. And that would be. Okay. That's the first. That's this term. And you can you can write this down. I think you should have i z x into p. Yeah. You're right. Good. Okay. Now, uh, we will move and be more specific and we will get into the expressions for the longitudinal dynamics. So, what are the two expressions of interest to us in longitudinal dynamics? What are the two expressions which are of interest to us? when you are talking about uh, sorry lateral dynamics you are talking about lateral dynamics what is the force talking about f y right and what is the other thing that we are talking about is the moment due to lateral forces. So, the moment due to lateral forces will be along z direction, right? The moment due to the lateral forces will be along z direction, so that is my interest, right? So, in other words, just to quickly summarize, so I have forces that are acting 
okay, that is the vehicle. Then that forces create a moment, okay, which is perpendicular to the plane of the board, which is the z. So, the two equations of interest to us are the lateral forces and the moment that is acting due to the lateral force, which is this. Yes. No, yeah, we will come to that. Okay. So, we are now going to look at a simple model which is called as the bicycle model. Okay. So, when I consider this, that is why I have drawn it like this. I am not going to consider the role. Okay. So, you are absolutely right, I have to, role is an important uh, phenomena that happens, you know, during cornering. But right now, okay, I am going to neglect the role. I was expecting that uh, question, I am happy that you asked this. So, let us now look at these two expressions. In other words, what I am going to do is, I am going to shrink these two wheels, okay, into one wheel, like this, the front and the rear wheels, and look at the vehicle by means of these two wheels, the front and the rear, and call this as a bicycle model. This is one of the most famous models uh, in vehicle dynamics. As he very correctly said, we are not taking into account the role right now. But then, when after we study this, we are going to introduce complexities one by one in order to understand what happens, okay, because of other factors which we have neglected, what happens due to the other factors. This is what we are going to study. Clear? Okay. So, we are into one of the most important models in the whole of vehicle dynamics, which is called as the bicycle model, right. So, I will remove this. As I promised, I will make it much easier. So, that is the one equation. I will remove this, I will remove this and these are the two equations that I am going to look at. Okay. Let, now, let me now expand this bicycle model. Now, we will introduce after uh, crossing the all these equations, now we will introduce lot more again physics, right. Okay. So, let us say that this is the rear wheel which I have collapsed, which I have collapsed. And let us say that this is the front wheel which is, okay, I am giving a turn to the front wheel. Let us say that that is nothing. I am just exaggerating this. I am giving a steering input to the wheel. Okay. Of course, that is the vehicle, that is the center, center of gravity location of the vehicle. Okay. So, that is the lambda which I had given, which is the steering input. Now, so I am, I am taking a turn. When I, have, when I take a turn, I will of course need this F y which we have been talking about, right. And how is F y created or how is it generated? We have already seen that this is due to the slip angle. So, a slip angle, if this is the force that is acting, okay, the small angle differences which I am going to neglect, right. So, that is the F y in the front and this is the F y at the rear. So, how is it generated by slip angle and what is the slip angle and that is the slip angle. Okay. Slip angle is alpha. Okay. No doubt my coordinate system that is x, y, z is perpendicular to the plane of the board. 
clear? Right. Now, the very first point I want you to notice, we will continue this in the next class, is that, is that the slip angle, which we have seen it before, but I am going to put some sign to it. The slip angle is, look at that, is in this direction, which is, which is in the negative direction, okay, and the force is created in the positive direction of y, in the positive direction, okay. So, this negative and positive directions, we have to, though we know this physically, we know how f y is created, but this negative and the positive directions, we will be careful when we write down the equations, right. So, there will be two alphas that are created, because I want the front and the rear. And let me call that as the rear alpha or alpha r, the rear slip angle. And let me call this as the front slip angle. So, note that this is a confusion. I have said this again and again. Note that what is slip angle, this alpha is not, is nothing to do with this delta, which is the steering angle. Clear? I need a slip angle to generate the force. Now, I have these two equations. Okay. And the n is equal to r. What is r? that is r, okay, which is the yaw velocity and r dot is the rate of change of r, right. Okay. Let me call this is again usually done like that, which we call this as L1 and L2. Let me call that as A and B because in the lateral dynamics uh, literature, the distance from the, from, of the CG location from the center of the tire is A and that is B, right. Okay. So, that A into F y F minus B into F y R is the moment that is acting. So, N is equal to F y F into A minus F y R into B, which is equal to I z I z z r dot. Clear? Right. F y, we'll we'll come to this in a minute. F y is F y f plus F y r. Right. Okay. We will continue this in the next class, we will stop here and we will continue the bicycle model. The, this is probably the most important central piece of the whole lateral dynamics. So, we will look at this, this very carefully and then understand the vehicle behavior during cornering. So, we will continue in the next class.